beautiful people welcome to let's get real with seven podcast today we have an extremely sensitive topic and a lot of people choose not to talk about it because they don't want to be viewed as weak or weird or whatever it is i'm not sure why some people decide they don't want to talk about it but today i've tried to create an environment where we can talk about that sensitive topic but i have my two amazing siblings with me today which i want them to introduce themselves before we get started so go ahead you can introduce yourself (laughs) Uh, my name is uh, Chubahiro Moiz, but I go by Moses. And yeah, a little bit about yourself. You oh. got, I know you have kids. <laughs> yeah, I got a beautiful wife. My name is Brenda. My two beautiful children, Riley and Ryan. And I'm blessed to have them in my life. Go ahead, beautiful sister. Uh, my name is Nyam Zay, but I go by Zay. And I go to school for x ray, and I model here and there. Yeah, you do. So. She cute. <laughs> hey, but before, uh, th- it's going to be a pretty serious topic today, man. Like, it, it's going to get pretty deep, but I know a few of us, we all have a few nerves, so I want us to do a little bit of just to get the jitters out of us. I want us to go. <laughs> it's like a <laughs> musical. Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay, yeah, no, because... I want us to have fun, man. I want us to enjoy the moment. It ultimately, is going to come down to us just trying to let people know that this topic needs to be talked about. Because I feel like, for me, I didn't know the two of you guys went through it. And so, actually, we should tell the people what the topic is about, actually. So, today's podcast is called Suicidal Thoughts. Now, it's actually quite interesting because when I brought this whole podcast idea to my sister and asked her if she wanted to be in any of my videos... She surprisingly told me that she wanted to be part of this one, but I was like, in my mind, I was like, I didn't even know you even went through that. And so that just tells you how little we talk about suicide. And if you've ever had anyone that's committed suicide or has thought about it, I'm truly sorry. And it's not an easy thing that not only the person that's going through it, but the family members, because they don't know what's truly happening. Like, I didn't know what was going on in your life until... Just about like three years ago, it was, more, it was actually very recent when I found out that you had those thoughts and things like that. So, but before we get into that deep, deep discussion, I know you guys kind of briefed on like the kind of person you guys are, but tell us a little bit more about the, because my family and I were part of the con- uh, concentration camp in Kong in Africa, yep. which was called the Rwanda Genocide, correct? No. What was it called? It's Congo Congo genocide. Yeah, yeah. Well, tomatoes, tomatoes. Same, yeah, same, same, yeah. same difference. Yeah. So, please, look, I would like for you to talk a little bit, just a brief discussion about that. Tell people about how that was like for you going through that whole situation. I mean, honestly, like it, it's kind of hard. I was a little kid myself. Uh, that time, I didn't really get what's really going on. They were just talking about, you know, like if you to see or who to stuff like that. But our tribe is Banyamulenge. Mm-hmm. And I mean, honestly, like, we didn't know we looked any different. Yeah. And one day, they just, you know, some military came in the in our house and started breaking into the door. Mm-hmm. When they break into the doors, windows, everything, they captured us and they, they took all of us. But my daddy was high. He was with us, but when they, we heard... Wait, hold up. My dad, he's our dad. <laughs> oh, I mean... <laughs> I mean, I'm talking no. about. I thought I no. heard our, but no. I guess you said really my like, dad. Like it was only his I mean, dad. Okay, I see. okay go ahead. Right. Anyways, so I love our, us all the same. Our dad, you know, he was in the room with the, because what happened was like it, it was a routine in our family. I don't know if you guys remember. You guys were still a little kid. No. Before we go to bed every night, we used to pray together. Mm. So like at that time, we were praying, praying. When we say Amen. That's when we heard it, like all that, like people start breaking into the house, people broke into the uh, windows and everything. And somehow, I don't even know how it happened. My dad hid under the bed. Yeah. Because like in Norman, they were looking for the uh, like parent, like a father's, like mm-hmm. a son who's older. Yeah. And they, like, so my dad hid under the bed. So they took us in like in this uh, like uh, prison. <clears throat> Uh, it was that one is it was a jail like you know we were there for like a week yeah 
you know, like my daddy didn't hear from us for a whole week. Mm. And he was like, okay, what kind of man am I? Because he got a chance to talk to mom before, like, you know, they switch us in different place. Yeah. You know, he goes like, my mom was kind of upset because like, why are you turning yourself in? He goes like, what kind of man am I? If I survive and my kids get killed or die, you know, like, where am I going to go? How am I going to live my life? So that's how he turned himself in. So th- that was the last time we ever saw him. Okay. You know? Yeah. Now, okay, I, okay, I love everything you said. Everything right there was, like, beautiful and perfect. But we've heard... I've pers- I, They probably haven't heard that. Again, I'm about to give you a moment to talk. Sorry. It's no, I'm... Paying attention. It's, it's interesting, right? I didn't know half of this. I it's, didn't know they either. They skip a lot I, of parts. They, so they only tell us what they think we want to yeah. hear. But or this is about hear. you. Yeah. So ultimately, when it comes to this... Because so, there's different things that happen in our life that lead us to get to another aspect of life. So the things that you went through in the camp yourself, like, yeah, I, I'm, I'm thank you for sharing that with the people and with us. But you specifically, like during the camp, what is it that you were going through? Like, because it's not like you were able to just war all together. You had to survive in the camp. Yeah. How did you do it? Like, what What are some, tell us one of a, at least one story that you like sticks out to you the most. I mean, honestly, like the, the first time uh, when we first got in there, you were still nervous, but after weeks, months go by, it becomes like a routine, a part of your life, you know, mm-hmm. because they used to make us do other things, uh, like they came to a point that they realized we still little, we can't escape, yeah. you know, they still make us like the slaves pretty much, mm-hmm. you know, we still like go get water, we still doing other things, you know, so we're trying to survive, we go to get water, and people give us food that day, uh, but one, like one of the story you said to give you one one of them was one time we were sleeping and they came and started waking us up. Mm-hmm. And they goes like, get up, get up, get up. So we got up, we went, like, they give us, like, a uh, like shovel. Yeah. They goes like, dig your own grave. Because, like, if you die, we don't want to dig your own grave, you know. So that was one, like, the one that was kind of, like, crazy for me. Yeah. Because, like, you're still young, you don't know what really is going on. But, yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of the story that went on. But it is, I mean... It was crazy. You came to a point like you feel like, I just wish I could die instead of to experience what I'm experiencing right now. Because that was one of the many, you know. And mm-hmm. Yeah, man. That's tough. That's for one. Dig your own grave. I would be like, no. If you're going to kill me, you dig in my grave. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jay. I don't think you had to say All right, Jay. <laughs> you're good. It's a transition. Okay. Okay, let's tell you. Okay, so... For a long time, my beautiful sister went by Jay. Now, actually, it's actually, I would actually love for you to tell the people why you transitioned back to your, to Zay. To my actual name? Yeah, to your actual name. <laughs> <laughs> um, so when you come to America as refugees, a lot of times people can't pronounce your name. So therefore, they'll give you a nickname or um, they just like shorten your name if it's easy enough to pronounce So when I was younger and I went to middle school, it was middle school, right? Sun Valley. Um, As we state the name, and the teacher's name was, no. um, (laughs) um, One of my teachers, it was like kindergarten. She couldn't pronounce my name. It's pronounced Nyamubze, but she couldn't pronounce it. Therefore, she just added the ending and started calling me Jay. And from then, it stuck. So then I went by that because... In our culture, it's disrespectful to correct our adults, yes. right? Yes. So I just went by Jay, and then it stuck. Everybody called me that. But of course, my mom still called me by my real name at times. You know how parents are. <laughs> Especially when they're mad. That name comes out real quick. <laughs> but um, so then when I became in college, right you, now. You became in college. Okay. So then, <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> so then when I went to college, um, <laughs> I Okay. I'm not going to say the name of the school. Actually, Pima Medical, it's one of the greatest schools I've been to. But um, one of my CIs, who's the tech, who was training me, he goes, so what's your name? And I told him, and he's like, okay, so what's your real name? Because they only have us by our real names. And I told him, and he's like, so where does the J come in? So I explained it to him, and he's like, well... I mean, you can go by J, but I'm going to call you Zay because that's the ending of your name and that's your real name. And I was like, you know what? I like that. So then I took ownership of what was mine and is still mine. And now I go by Zay. 
It's taking. No, not you. Oh, her. Oh, what? Oh, <laughs> it's taken a while as a transition, <laughs> just because I've gone by it for. I'm not gonna say how many years because you'll release how old I am. Yeah. But so <laughs> it's been going on for like five months, and it's taking some time. Yeah, for me, it's yeah, definitely okay. taking them some time. But yeah. okay, man. Now it's time to get down to business and why we came here. Let's talk about this. Let's talk about suicide, man. Uh, for me, I would actually love for you guys to both share how that was like because I've never personally went through it, so I can't really sit here and talk to the people and tell them about oh, this is how it feels. So the first question I guess would be like, <clears throat> what is it like, like? What is it? I'll add Jay, Zay, Zay, you I can, love I you. still love you too. I'm so sorry. I promised her I would get it right. But oh, I would, please, Jay, Zay, can you please share? Can you be the first one to share for me, please? Like, About I wanna, what it's like. Yeah, what it's like. What is it like to go through? Like, do you feel alone? Do you feel like there's, you don't have anyone to talk to? Do you feel, what is it? What is that like um, for, for the people that don't know? I guess people, when it comes to suicidal thoughts or acting out in suicidal ways, mm -hmm. for me, it wasn't more like I felt alone. It wasn't that. It's just that it wasn't something I needed to share with anybody or express to anybody. It was more like something I needed to deal with or go through for myself in order to see, like, why is this happening or what. It, but um, for me, it was like... Just having the suicidal thoughts was like, I just didn't want to be like here anymore. I feel like you go through so much trauma, mm -hmm. you don't realize that it's all in your head or what's going on or like, like how hard it really hurt you or like the experiences you went in. The I was little when concentration camp happened. Yeah. And then I don't know if they know, but the reason that our tribe or the Banyamurenge tribe was getting killed off. It was because of what we looked like or the language was spoke. And that's the reason why they wanted to kill us. And it was our own president that wanted to kill us, correct? So it was our president. So imagine your president wanting to kill you because of what you looked like. So you felt already then and there that you weren't good enough for the world. So then coming to a whole nother place, being here where everybody like you're getting used to everybody yeah so i went from a place where nobody wanted us nobody thought we belonged on this earth to a place where it was foreign i didn't know anything that was going on here and my emotions were already trapped within me yeah. losing my father my sister going through things she went through that i could never possibly imagine yeah so that i was already like fighting with myself i'm like why did this happen to them and not me? Like, I wanted to be the one who was gone. For me, it was like, I want it to have been me. Mm -hmm. So I don't have to live in the moment of knowing that I lost my father in a situation that, like, could have been prevented. Yeah. But I'm the one who survived. He wanted to save us, but I survived. Mm -hmm. Like, so my sister went through this. My... I was a little kid, so I don't remember a lot of things. Yeah. I had nightmares as a kid when I was here, like thinking that like I went through certain things. But I'm like, why did it happen to them and not me? Because they will always remember those things. They were at an age where these things are fresh to them. Yeah. For me, I was at what? Two and a half, three, yeah. four. It was like three or four. I would never, that would have surpassed my memory. Yeah. I would not have remembered. But they live with this every day. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? So it was more like I was carrying my own burden and everybody else's burden. But it wasn't a burden I wanted to share with anybody. Because then people would be like, what's wrong with you? Why are you thinking like this? God helped you survive this situation. And you still think that you're not good enough? Mm -hmm. You know? It's yeah. just hard going from your own home place to a place where... It's still foreign, but people still don't accept you. It's a transition that I just like lived through everybody telling me I wasn't good enough. So for me, it was a way to escape all those emotions. So <clears throat> just for me, like, to get it straight, for you, the biggest reason why you were going through that is because you're going from a place where 
uh, your your people are getting killed off for the way they look like. Mm-hmm. Which, aka, we have no choice in that. Like, we just right. get born. Like, it's not mm-hmm. like you chose to look like that. And then, so you go from a place that your own president, like you said, wants to kill you for the way you look like. And then you come into a different country, a, a foreign country, where um, you don't know anything that's happening. And then, so you still almost feel like unaccepted uh, yeah unaccepted they don't accept me yeah uh, could you they still look at me we, so when we talk about the way you're not accepted are you talking about look wise are you talking about your color where you're from here now like now back in africa because africa right. we know we because right. of our tribe and the mm-hmm. way we look like was it did you still struggle with the sense of like you didn't love yourself inside by the way you look like mm-hmm. because of those things do you think that's why um, you struggled when you came here because of that? Or was it just more of... Yeah, I mean, I've always... it's It was never really the females. Mm. So what hurt me the most was, like, for as long as I could remember, like, guys would reject me because I'm black. Mm, or, like, tough. my hair was in a certain way. Yeah. They would tell me to my... See... Now, looking back, I'm like, I appreciate that people are honest. Mm-hmm. But there's a certain time where, like, honesty could really hit too close to home yeah. to where it makes you think that you're still not good enough. Mm-hmm. So here, I mean, I've always, people have always told me, I still hear things like that right now. Yeah. Like I still go through the whole racial thing and people just tell me like, you don't belong here. You're an abomination to the world. Your people are cockroaches. And this is in my 20s. That revealed I'm in my 20s. But... <laughs> Um, I still hear that all the time, but for me, it was more like what I look like. Mm -hmm. That's always been the issue. And that's what was, you know, Um, pretty people out there like, damn, she a baddie. Okay. She a baddie. (laughs) But also (laughs) intelligence wise, Mm -hmm. I want to be smart. I think like now I think I'm smart. I would think, (laughs) I would think like 10 years of school would have made me a tad bit smart, but yeah, like, I continuously compare myself. It's still a problem, but it's not like it was before. Mm-hmm. It's just like, I, I wish I was smarter than that. I was. Yeah. Okay, my guy. <laughs> let's, let's talk about it, man. How about you? What? When did, for you, Alyssa, say, when did the thoughts of suicide begin to occur, and why? I mean, honestly, like, is. When I first got here, actually, mm. because when I was in back in Africa, when we were in prison and stuff like that, is at that time I didn't want to leave. You know, I, I want to die, so I don't have experience what I was experienced. Yeah. But when I came here, when I came here, I was uh, I didn't love who I was. Mm-hmm. Like I hate the person I see in the mirror. You know, I felt like I wasn't good enough. In the sense of what, though, like the physical, physical, like. Yeah. So it was like, almost the same thing because we're yes. getting killed because of the way we look like. So I, I don't know, maybe that's what caused it. But honestly, I I just felt it inside of me. Mm-hmm. Like I felt like I wasn't good enough, and I didn't want to be black. Like you know, because I used to see some uh, a sibling like they light skinny than me. Like you know, those kind of stuff. Like you know, I was like, why? You know, like yeah, yeah. You, I just <clears throat> didn't love myself. Mm-hmm. You know, so for a long time. For the longest time, like, I felt like I wasn't good enough. And that's why everything began. Mm-hmm. Like, that's about thinking about killing myself. Is I just didn't love who I was. I didn't love myself. Like, I felt like I'm not good enough. Like, or oh, when other people are doing better than I am, I feel like, how come me, I cannot be like them? All kind of stuff like that, you know? Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, honestly, just like, physically, like, I didn't love who I was. Now, for me, it just, it's just crazy to even think that the both of you guys had to go through this. Because knowing the both of you guys, you guys are extroverts. You guys are both amazing people. Everybody, lo- well, from everyone that I know, I don't know how many people who hate you, who doesn't hate you. But for the most part, everybody, like, loves you guys. You guys are always outgoing. And you guys, what's crazy for me is, like, we've talked about this a little bit. Yeah. And pl- I want you to hit on this, but you always... Are trying to make people feel good about themselves, yes. even though deep down you're hurting. Yes. Can you can you please touch on that and explain to me? Because for me, like knowing you, like you're outgoing, and yeah. I've always felt okay to come talk to you. But deep down, you are struggling. Yes. But you never put it out there because I would like uh, you to. Honestly, okay, I'm uh, the 
third kid in the family. You want to count that one more time? <laughs> third, 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 third. Yeah, I'm number three in the family. So like, I feel like I have to be an example mm-hmm. to my mm-hmm. uh, younger brothers and sisters. And I have to, it's like a parent. Yeah. Like yeah. they never want to see, they never wanted the kids to see them sad. Mm-hmm. They always like, they want to feel like they're a super, superhero, you know? Yeah. Like, you know, they put a fake, you know, even when... They, like they hurting inside. Mm-hmm. So for me, I felt like if I come and complain to you, like, hey man, I'm thinking about killing myself. Like, what am I telling you? Yeah. You know, it's okay for you to to go through that. Yeah. So like, honestly, like so many, uh, so many times, so many nights, so many days, like, like I used to even like, like giving myself idea, like should I just go drive the car to the? You remember when the apartments we live in? Yeah. Like when you're about to get in the in the mm-hmm. highway, like you know they had a wall. Mm-hmm. between the freeway and the, and the little street. Mm-hmm. Like I used to say, like, can I just go and just run into that wall? Yeah. Like, my fear is, like, how about if I do <clears throat> run into that wall and I became, like, I can't walk, I can't do nothing. I survive, yeah. you know, yeah. instead of dying. So, like, what does that do me? And I said, like, when I'm driving the freeway, should I just hear somebody, you know, like, and, and I, I get scared again. I'm like, how about if I kill the other person and I survive? Mm-hmm. You know, so many... Crazy. You're only trying to take your exactly. life, not anybody Nobody, else's. Yeah. So, and that's what like, I, I felt like, you know, if somebody else is going through a problem, you know, they could tell me because I had to put a fix, you know, attitude, yeah. you know, all kind of like, yeah. you know, different face. So somebody else doesn't go through whatever I'm going through. Mm-hmm. So if they're going through there, if they see me happy, you know, like outgoing, they could be like, hey man, guess what? You're always happy, but you know what? Like, I'm going through crazy stuff. It, it already happened to me. Like, two people came to me and talked to me about what they were going through because my attitude. Mm-hmm. So, just like, I never wish somebody has to go through whatever I was going Honestly, through. So, that's the only thing I was trying to do. Like, just put a fake smile, fake attitude. So, yeah. just somebody else doesn't go through whatever I'm going through. Mm-hmm. So, if I could help somebody else, it makes me feel good. At the same time, like, people used to tell me, oh, Man, Moses, see, you're a good person. I used to hate those people. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm like, you don't have to lie to me. Like, yeah. every I, compliment I, you got. Exactly. You every good like, compliment mm-hmm. yeah. is negative to me. Mm-hmm. Every negative is positive to me. Oh, at least he's honest. Yeah. yeah. You know, so that's about it with that for the longest time. Mm-hmm. You know, even until this day, there's some days I don't believe in myself. Oh. Mm-hmm. You know, honestly, yeah. like, until this day, like, there's some days that, like, I feel like, you know, <clears throat> what I'm doing is right, what I'm doing is this, this, even to this day, you know, I still feel that, but at the same time, like, you know, I'm actually blessed to have the wo- the woman I have in my life, like, always encouraging me, like, you know, there by my side. Brownie but, points. You know, <laughs> <laughs> but honestly, like, honestly, like, even, like, don't, whatever you went through in the past, mm-hmm. like, is always, you know, follow you, you know, it's gonna fade little by little, but it doesn't, her, like the way it used to hurt, yeah. Because now, like, honestly, like, you know, me and you we barely start sharing about this. Mm-hmm. Well, not even three months or yeah. two months is less than that. So, like, the more like I talk to people about it, like, the little help it, it feels mm-hmm. like it, it helps. Like, sometimes I, I look forward, like, I could call you now and talk about this, you know, like, yeah. you know, because it's like a weight of exactly. They always they don't like who we are, we're not talking about uh races or anything like that no human being human being as you know, in like general it, it yeah. doesn't matter who like exactly. it, people like it yeah you yeah, know yeah. you feel like you're not loved by everybody yeah. you know what i'm saying yeah. so that's what i'm saying yeah. like people that could say oh this and this is but mm-hmm. honestly even your own people you yeah know, even you know, a, i mean your our own, own people tried killing us exactly. you know what i mean our own tri- even it's like, like every every race man like, every even race. your own tribe like they, they hate we there's hate each other you know there's mm-hmm. stuff own, like that we're not yeah. just saying like it's a, a different tribe or anything like no. that racial but just, we're just saying it. people in general yeah. somebody will always find a reason to not like exactly you. Exactly. You could be not doing. Me. Everybody oh, like me, just, dog. Just, everybody <laughs> loves me. I don't know about that. But yeah, is, all right. <laughs> that's the, how you believe it. That's what you believe. And the thing is that, yeah, I may not, or you may not have liked yourself because of what you look like, or your skin tone. Because you've been told so long, what you look like is wrong. Yeah. You don't belong here. But imagine telling somebody that you have suicidal thoughts. Yeah. Mm. Putting that on top yeah. of you already not liking yourself. I'm actually like, and yeah, and having to express that, it's like, 
people for, are still judging people you already again. judge you yeah that's on like a judgment on top of the exactly. judgment so like why exactly. would i put myself through that you yeah. know so and like imagine if out of nowhere i'm in my own home and i kill myself and my mom were to find me or somebody and they have never known the blame and the pain that it creates for the rest of their lives yeah. is you know what i mean mm-hmm. but mostly one of the reasons that i never went through it fully is because i came to a point where i was like i need to stop these thoughts in my head i need to stop letting the world tell me who i needed to be yeah. or what i needed to look like i mean i still hear it all the time it hurts the exact same every time but it's what i do with those emotions mm-hmm. or like how i take it and yeah. how big of a part they take in my life these people are i don't know them mm-hmm. i don't see them on an everyday base like they don't live in my household they're not people i surround myself all the time yeah so i was like i need to take what they're saying listen to it but make it and turn it into a positive thing because these little kids that are growing in this generation who hear the exact same thing i went through they probably think they're alone yeah. for me yeah. what took me out of it too is modeling definitely mm. i mean i still struggle because like you would never like in our culture mm-hmm. what they think modeling is is not what it really is yeah you know what i mean yeah. mm-hmm. so for me when i like i used to watch america's next top model for me i was like wow like people actually believe they're beautiful like you can actually change that you can actually make somebody else believe that they can overcome the situations they've been in yeah. and take pride in who they are. So that's what I had to do. I was like, there's no way I can make that little girl feel any more beautiful if I still don't believe it and I don't show her that and tell her that. You're talking about like the future generation. Yeah. Okay. I mean, like my little nef- nieces right now mm-hmm. and my nephews, I'm like, I don't want them to ever feel like they're not good enough because of their skin color. They're not good enough because their education is not... As where they you know what i mean knows, yeah. i want to be a positive light i want them to see that this girl yeah she still has insecurities but she's working on them and she's talking to somebody you know mm-hmm. what i mean yeah. it's not easy to talk to people yeah. Especially you know what i mean topic, this topic it's is... not easy and mm-hmm. not very many people know that's why you've never known that's why you've never known i mean yeah. probably three people in the world know you know what i mean mm-hmm. so it's like you have to decide how you, why that didn't happen and who you want to become after people, The it. people that are, actually do go through it, I don't think they understand the the cause you're going to, the kind of effect it will have on their families, their friends. Because yeah. once they, because well, let, let's say hypothetically they kill, them, they kill themselves. Now, their pain is gone. Yeah. But now they've created so much more pain for everyone else around them. Like, because they feel like that but they're But the not, pain... They, but the thing is, the people around them, yeah. at the moment they're dealing with it, they don't know the pain that's in there. And that's it. Yeah, you know sure. what I mean? Yeah. And even that pain, if you tell people, the dynamic of the family changes, mm-hmm. and then they start putting blame on themselves, the per- and then they forget the person. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, you know what I'm talking in, about? Because pers- if you told mom, and mom was blaming herself, yeah. right? Yeah, I mean- mom forgets... For- it's not that she forgets, but she goes, why is my child feeling like this? Like, putting the blame on herself, but not asking, what can I do to help? Yeah. Like, what, what's the, that's the thing that people forget. Yeah, they want, people, everybody's always like, you know you can talk to me about it. You know yeah. I want to help. Yeah. But how much, like, you, after I tell you that, how much of you is judging me for having those thoughts? How much can you actually help me with putting your feelings aside of not feeling like I should have seen this coming or mm. I should have known you were feeling like this or I can't believe we've been friends this long and, you didn't and I didn't, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and another thing is like, honestly, like I think our culture is really, really, really hard mm-hmm. because is like everything like you tell them, like they always say, oh, that's evil talking to you. Instead mm. of find a way, like, you know. A solution, yeah. Like, okay, you're feeling that way. So what can we do to help? Mm-hmm. Instead of just like, you know what? Just go pray about it. You know, that's the evil mm. talking to you. So I'm like, you know, I'm like, I mean? you know so that's, honestly, like, the reason why, like, yeah. 
of course you, you know you don't feel like you're comfortable to come to share about this kind of stuff but when you ask me to come to share with this you know it just i know so many people they're going through this but they just feel like you know what people are gonna see me different ways mm -hmm. after i'm done sharing with this people yeah. are gonna take me in certain ways you know but it's okay but it, like i could change somebody else's life yeah. yeah you know just one person and honestly like this topic is not gonna go change everybody who's going through that yeah no it won't because everybody's my, situation's exactly, different in my head only one person and that's enough for yeah. for me for me too like you know yeah. so i'm just saying like the problem is honestly like our culture is so different because like Everything is God, 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 yeah. God. You know? And we're not putting anything bad about our you culture. Because I do love a lot of... No, no, about it's beautiful. Yeah, no, right. Sure. I just don't want anybody to take it the wrong way. Like, we're bashing... No, but I'm, no, I'm just saying, take like... take pride in being us. We don't but, take time. It's yeah. just like... Honestly, like, let's just be honest. I barely found out this today about Jay. You know? Mm -hmm. I feel like every time... Yeah, I'm not gonna call you Zay. I don't know. I'm just Jay. That's what I'm used to. So I saw you start laughing. But I'm honestly. I'm gonna like, forgive you this one time. <laughs> I'm serious. Honestly, I just think as a human being, as a people from different tribe, you know, yeah. like different race, you know, it doesn't matter where you came from. When you come in this country, they have their own, you know, like tribe too. This is a, yeah. a different tribe. It's a different tribe you know? to us, yeah. yeah. So just because we grew up here. Mm -hmm. You know, especially you guys. Mm -hmm. You guys know more about America than Africa. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. which is not a bad thing. But so how can we combine this? So to help the together. people who's going through that. Mm -hmm. So I just say, honestly, I feel like, you know, uh, us as a human, like, and I'm glad that, you know, you, you know, you came up with this idea, you know, maybe God want to use this uh, for so many reasons, you know, yeah. honestly, like, and that's why I want to come. I didn't come here because you're my brother. It's because I want to share because... I could help another person. Like, yeah. how many people do I run into every day? A lot. But how many people who go to social media? A lot. Yeah, you know, the people I can run, uh, run across to, but I, they could see. On so, yeah. You know, yeah. social media. That's so honestly, like, you know, and I'm so thankful that you came up with this idea. And if you didn't tell me, honestly, I would never know that Jay went through this. Mm. You know? Yeah. An angel. Come on. Yeah, but but honestly, like I felt like I was the only one who gone through this. Yeah, you know, and yeah, I there's a lot of people that are going through this know, situation. How many like, people? And I would like honestly, like you know, like my how many of our family member who went to crazy things? Yeah. We ten of us. Yeah, you know, yeah. like it's a bunch of belief. Like I don't know, like and they, honestly, they don't have to go through whatever we went through. Yeah, but they might went to different things that you know they never, you know, like yeah. we never knew. So mm -hmm. like honestly, like so. That's why, just like how Jay says, it's just about God, you know. Like, I believe there's heaven and hell, mm -hmm. you know. Just like how uh, Zay said, like, if you kill, if, <laughs> if, we, if you kill yourself, you go to hell. Yeah. And that's honestly, that's why I really kind of like helped me too, you know, because like I felt like if I'm judging, like I'm not good enough, I'm saying God is not good enough. Mm -hmm. Please, so talk about more about that. In, in the right. sense of, because I, because I love that you, you've told me that before too. Is, you know, because when you, because when you are looking in the mirror and yes. saying, "Oh, I don't, I don't mm -hmm. love myself." Yes. Mm -hmm. so, you know, yeah, right? yeah. So when I was, I used to look at myself in the mirror. I say, "I'm not good enough." But yes, I'm right here saying, like, you know, I'm Christian. I believe, you know, in God. Yeah. So, and then when we say, like, we read the Bible, it's God created us in His own image. Mm -hmm. So when we say we don't look good enough, then and definitely we're saying, "God, you're not good enough." Yeah. yeah. You know, we ain't got his image. So, honestly, that's the only one thing that really kind of, like, start changing. Like, I start, like, okay, I'm Christian. So, then yeah. God is handsome. When you think about God is handsome, God is yeah. this. Great, you know. So, I start, like, telling myself in the mirror, like, you know what? Moses, you are good enough. Moses, you this. You yeah. this. So, the more I talk to myself. Yeah. Yeah. And the, no matter what, until you believe that, that you're this person... Enough. Yeah. Nobody will ever make you feel like you're good enough. Yeah. You know, so until, honestly, like I believe in myself and say that, you know what, I'm a good enough, you know, I'm handsome. Yeah. You know, like after that, like I saw like I was too cocky. I saw like, you know, <laughs> even the people say like, I know. Hey, you know, this man oh, was yeah. a lady. He was a ladies man. I was, still is, even with that ring on it. <laughs> <Be quiet. laughs> no, but honestly though, so, so for real, like that's only one thing, like, you know, 
we so caught up in trying to change other people or trying to please other people mm, that's instead of pleasing ourselves because yeah. when you please yourself eventually you're going to please the other people too yeah because no one will ever love you until more you than, love yourself more than you love yeah. yourself mm-hmm. yeah because honestly like you know like when you think about how many girls that broke your heart how many guys that broke your heart never have myself you know? I know but i'm just saying <laughs> we so we get to a point where we say like you know what how can why was i good enough mm-hmm. yeah. but instead of thinking like maybe you know what they don't deserve me yeah okay. you know they don't they deserve don't. me mm-hmm. or they're not at a point in their life where they're ready to receive somebody who already understands themselves e- exactly. or loves themselves mm-hmm. you know honestly so that's why like you know it's beautiful man honestly like and i'm glad we're talking about this stuff because I would never know all this stuff, yeah. you know, about uh, my sister. You know, it's, it's a bit for that we could talk about this stuff. And I know they're going to come. You have a bunch of other questions that we take a long time for other No, people, bro, you know? like, I just, but, again, like, this is a space where I want people to share. And you guys yeah. are doing an amazing job, by the way, actually. Yeah. And I'm just, again, like you said, man, even if one person gets changed by this, bro, yeah. I think the accomplishment of this podcast, and again, you said I came up with it, but I, tr- I, don't, I don't think I came up with it. I'm just a vessel, and I'm letting God kind of use me. In any way, shape, or form. So, but yeah, thank you. Like again, this is an environment for us to talk, and like you said, to get a note. Like we're siblings. We grew up together in the same home, and I'm literally just finding out these new things so about everyone. Like, what do you, what do you tell someone that's going through the same situation you're going through, and they want to? Because I think the best thing to solve this problem is to be open about it and talk yes, about it. Yeah, absolutely. But it's like you have to find that right person to talk to as well, too. Because like, like you guys were talking about, like, oh, if you go and talk to them and then they begin to judge take you. blame for it or yeah. judge you, yeah. then that's not really helping you. Now you're, you're again, alone because it goes away yeah. from you and them trying to help you. So now it almost is about them. Yeah. Like, how dare you not tell me? Like, I thought I was a good friend, and now it's about them. And instead of like, hey, like, what can I do? So to help what do you? Like, so what do you tell those people? Like, they because they want to share. Because I'm pretty sure you guys wanted to share, but you just didn't feel open. Like, what would you tell them? Honestly, like just like how Jay said, it's hard to tell your family member because they'll blame themselves. Mm-hmm. Okay, and that's why, like, honestly, we were so blessed and lucky, and I don't better word to say to have. You know, Mama D. Uh, D and Brother Tony. Yeah. You know, because like again, Mama D and Brother Tony. For those of you guys who don't know, I'm pretty sure you guys heard of my other podcast. They're our godparents. Yes. And they're just basically our second mom and dad. Yes. Like, uh, because yeah, like I remember when the way they found out was I was that I was going through that. I talked to one of the counselor at school, mm-hmm. and you know, who can we talk to? You know, I didn't give my mom information because. You know, mom, she have 10 kids. At the time, I was even still young. Yeah. You know, she's already dealing with a lot of things. Like, she lost her husband. Mm-hmm. She have all these 10 kids to raise. You know, like, I didn't want to put another thing. A burden? No, you know, no, no, no. I was like, you know, I don't know how I mentioned their name. Like, I mentioned their name. When they found out, they can't pick me up at school. When they picked me up at school, they took me to the park, you know. Because oh, that, Mama D. Yeah, Mama D and Brother Tony. Oh, Tommy. okay. I was like, you too? You know. But continue. I'll tell mine. Okay. Go ahead. You know, so they took me to the park. <laughs> when they took me to the park, they say, you know, we know what you're going through. You know, your teacher told us, you know, we're right here for you. You could cry. You could joke. You could do whatever you want. But we just want to let you know we are here for you. You mm-hmm. know, you never feel like you're alone and stuff like that. You know, so. Yeah. That like, you know, like it just the fact they took time. To drive all the way yeah. to my school, pick me up, take me to the park. All this, it showed like people care about me. Mm-hmm. But so, so see, but but we, you, they had to get informed about what you were going through before they yeah. could even start. Talking and the reason it was when my dear brother turned is because we put them as our contacts yes. because mom's phone. Yes. Okay. Because like, so they have to reach out to someone. So you got, so someone's got to be able to figure it out first. So how do you go about that? Because like, that was just by chance and we got lucky with Mama D and Brother Tony. Like, they were uh, an extreme blessing. Like, you know, but the problem said is people react differently. Not just that. Yeah. They got to, when you're going through any situation you're going through, Gotta always find a way to show you the sign, mm-hmm. but because we're so caught up in ourselves, like mm-hmm. what's what we're going through, we well, forget to see all those yeah. things, all, all those people, or yeah. those little things. Because like, gotta could bring somebody who could talk to you, you know. 
and they show you like they really care about you. Mm -hmm. In your mind, because you're so caught up with whatever you're going through, you forget about, hey, maybe that's a guy sign. Like this yeah. person, I don't even know this guy. Mm -hmm. And he's right here talking to me about this stuff. You know, I think honestly, sometimes we gotta take time, like see the things that are around us. Yeah. They gotta already give us a sign. Mm. You know, if you gotta have and give us a sign, like you gotta ask. You know, just like how you say, how can I know you, you, you're thirsty if you don't ask for water? Mm. You know, if you anything you need in life, like honestly, like I learned that because the people had around me. Mm -hmm. You know, like in the game, like this come once in a lifetime, honestly. Like I don't think you could, you know, anybody could go through this, like find that person who truly really care about them, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, but if if whatever you're going through, like see around you, like do I have that one person I could talk to? Yeah. Okay, if I don't, God, please, you know, like I know what I'm going through. I can help myself. I'm coming to the dead end. Show me the sign. And when you say, God, give me the sign, you got to be aware. Like, maybe God is showing you already the sign. Yeah. But we just ignore it. Yeah. So that's what I think, like, you know, like, when you <coughs> say, what can we tell people who's going through this to help them? Honestly, just find one person. I don't care who you, that person is in your life. You know, it could be a friend. It could be a stranger. It could be whatever. Because you run into a person because God wants you to run into that person. Yeah. You know, but yeah. why? Yeah. Because he already have, you know, solution. Because God, he worked through human being. Yeah. Devil sure. worked through human being. Mm -hmm. All these people who did all these crazy things, it's not them. It's evil. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. when somebody do good things to you, it's God doing that. It was somebody do something bad. It's evil doing that. Yeah. You know, so like sometimes we so caught up and say like, these people did this to us. These people did this, this. Instead of say like, evil did this to us, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah. So honestly, like, you know, Find a person to talk to, just like how you say, find somebody to talk to you because that's how you're gonna get help. Yeah, you know, because no, we're not God, you know, we don't yeah. read people's mind, true, you know. But when you even the God says, Ask, you shall receive, knock, the door will be open. My mm -hmm. God, you know, so all that stuff, yeah, man. True. I just so, you know, like honestly, if you're going to whatever you're going through, it could seek. be good or bad, you know, seek for help, it won't make you any. You know, less, less. Yeah. you know, yeah. but the reason why we're still alive is because God want to use us, mm. you mm -hmm. know, honestly, like, you know, we're not around because we're better than the, the yeah, other people kill not. themselves, Yeah, you know, and honestly, this like, you know, like right now you could be like, man, it was a big deal that because we're still alive. Honestly, no, it's because maybe God save our lives so we could share about this stuff yes, and moment. that's why honestly like i really want to do this like mm -hmm. of course when you talk to me about it i was thinking about it, i was nervous mm -hmm. you know how people gonna see me now i'm a husband yeah. i'm a father you know how people gonna see me because just like how you say so many people if i tell them about my life they get surprised because mm -hmm. the person i am yeah. yeah you know but honestly like yes you could put a fake whatever you want to put there but at the end of the day, you're hurting inside. You, you know. You have to be honest with yourself. You know. Yes, you gotta be like honest with it's yourself, a part of and then talk to somebody. Yeah. You know, ask for help. You know, all these people right here in, your, in, in this earth to help one another. Like, why are we siblings? Why mom and this didn't have one person, one baby, one African dad? Dad, you know, dad, dad put it down. <laughs> dad went crazy. You know, but I'm just saying, like, the reason why because like we could have each other's back yeah. when you're weak. But how am I, how are you going to know I'm weak if you're not, you know, I'm not yeah. telling you I'm weak. Mm -hmm. exactly. You know, so honestly, the only thing I could just say, like, you know, seek for help, man. Find you know, someone. Find someone, yeah. you know. And honestly, that's all. There's nothing else behind that. I mean, Project. I think it's easy to say, like, try to talk to people. But it's true. Like, you do need to find, but you just need to find that right person. Tell us your story that you're going to say. I, um, what is it called? So we had counselors. Oh my gosh. I was not a big fan of counselors at all. Mm -hmm. But um, you know which counselor I'm talking about because I've always had this counselor. Like, Should I know in, her? But I'm not going to say the don't name. Don't say it. But, um, I think I know who you're talking so about. So in that. middle school, I went to my counselor because I don't know. I think for the first time in my life, I acted. Oh, I got in trouble for accidentally bumping into a kid. But this kid was like having issues and stuff like that. So she told my teacher... 
It was he told my teacher. And um, I remember my teacher's name too. I remember way too many people's names. <laughs> and so, um, so I was sent to the office. And for the first time in my life, I got a referral. But of course, mom didn't know that because... You should have. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I went to the counselor and I had to speak to her. And I made this comment. I was like, I just wish I wasn't alive. Like, you know, I don't belong here. And she asked me, she's like, why do you say that? And I was like, because I'm just not good enough for anybody. Nobody loves me the same. Nobody, I like, treats me the same or blah, blah, blah. So I said like a dumb thing. I was like... You know, I just wish I could die. Mm -hmm. And of course, when you say things like that, your parents are informed. And me being me, I had mom's contact on there. Mom, like mom's contact. So they called mom because like to talk to her because that's what your counselors are supposed to do. <laughs> they actually do their job. <laughs> okay. And we talked about it and then we left. Of course, I denied it in front of mom. But mm -hmm. when we left... She's like, mom was asking me questions. And I was like, no. And she's like, why would you ever think things like that? See, because like mom's in survival mode. Yeah. She raised all of us. So she's always thinking of all um, our well-being and making sure she provides. So that was like a burden I didn't want on her. So of course I lied, but mom didn't understand. Like to her, that's like, oh my gosh, like you should never say things like that. And we believe in God. Yes. There's... You know, there's many religions in the world and everybody has a different belief and not everybody goes to church, but they do have a religion. Mm -hmm. So we talk about God a lot because for me, I think the reason I continuously believe in God is because I do have seen his miracles. Some people have never experienced it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We were we survived a death camp, yeah. a year and a half of being in a death camp. If there wasn't a God... I don't think things like that are possible. So we all have had things in our lives that have happened that make us believe in a God. But so, yeah, that's what happened to me at school. And that's the first time that I knew I couldn't tell anybody in our family, because the if my mom can react like that, how many other people, how many other. So for me, what I say is if somebody tells you that they don't love themselves, in your head, I feel like you should already feel like that's a sign where they're like, this person might not be happy. Mm. But the thing for you to do is not judge them, is yeah. not say, like, you should never think that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can tell them to not think that, but to them, they've been thinking about it for a while or they would never have said it out loud. Yeah. Sometimes it's accidental. Mm -hmm. But I think that if you really want somebody to trust you, in situations like that where they feel like they can harm themselves or they are having suicidal thoughts is for you to just listen mm. sit there and just be like tell me more if you want that's like if you want don't force them be like okay you need to tell me right now what's going on like why are you thinking this this you need to create a space where they feel comfortable to come back to you yeah. when this situation happens or like when they have thoughts like that so if I don't know. I've had a few friends who I've had conversations about this with. Mm -hmm. But it took years. It's not something that just like happens automatically because instinctly, our first thought is to judge, mm -hmm. to jump to like the worst, you know? Yeah. So I just say, you know, let them open up when they're ready because you won't know the whole story if you automatically attack them. And they won't be comfortable coming back to you if they feel like... Because to them, you seem like a happy person. Like, to me, nobody... Like, I'm a very closed up person in the sense of, like, personal things. I'm very outgoing and I love people and I'll talk yeah. to anybody. But nobody knows personal things because there are things that you choose to tell people. Mm -hmm. Because you know and trust them. And then there's things that you choose not to say to anybody else in certain aspects like other people that you know because you know they'll judge you you go to school with them or you see them all the time or you they're in the church yeah you feel like once they know that everything changes mm. so you just have to like let them come to you or just create that space they know you like let them come to you just okay. be open don't i feel like 
Don't attack them. Don't judge them. Don't tell them how they need to feel. That is the worst thing. Don't tell me how to feel. I'm already feeling crappy already. Like, don't. Yeah. Like, it doesn't happen overnight where you feel better. Like, mm. I just think you just need to be the person where they feel comfortable with. Just create a space okay. that they feel free to, sure. I would say, you know? Man, uh, thank you guys very, very much for sharing all your amazing stories and just everything that you guys have had to go through. And, like, again, man, like they said, like, my sister Zay said, just create that environment, which this is kind of something that I'm trying to do here. Create an environment where people feel okay to share, trusting enough to be like, okay, well, I want to be vulnerable. So for you guys out there, man, to help people that are going through the same situations that my amazing uh, siblings went through, just be there for them. Love on them. Allow them to come to you and talk to you. Don't ever put them in a situation where they feel like I can't tell them because they're going to judge me. Or like my brother said, he said, just go tell one person, even if it's one person, the person you feel like you can trust the most. And even, it, let's say hypothetically, this person that you said, okay, I trust them and let me tell them. Be also ready to understand that they might not take it exactly how you want to take it. But at least you've shared. At least now you've gotten it off your chest. And if they're going to choose to judge you and they're going to choose to look at you differently, then that's on them. That's a, that shows you their character and the kind of person they are. That's not who you are. You're much better than that. Mm -hmm. And so just just let just get rid of that burden on yourself. Like that's the biggest thing I think that people should know. Like to just feel okay in your own skin. Love yourself. I know it's hard, especially in the world we're living in today, because we're all told there's a specific way you should look to be beautiful or a specific way to look like or talk like but there isn't a specific way or else god wouldn't create us with all these different type of gifts and different personalities with that being said man but and again just like I, we were saying like find somebody look how many people who do we tell i told my counselor you tell your mm -hmm. counselor you're mm -hmm. not the one who help us yeah true you know like but they he did lead away. But they, they let us exactly. see. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So the person that you might feel like you trust that you could share with, mm -hmm. it's not the person who might help you. Yeah. You know, and be prepared, like, you know, to hear from somebody else. Mm -hmm. Yes, if you hear that they told this person, you're going to get hurt. Like, man, I trust this person. He told me, you know, he won't tell nobody, but he wants to tell somebody. Yeah. Maybe God is not trying to use the person you told. Like another yeah. person, he's gonna bring somebody else. So honestly, like, just sometimes the people we feel like we trust, they might let us down, mm -hmm. but they're not actually letting us down. Yeah, they're leading to a way, a way for us to get help. Mm -hmm. You know. So I told my counsel, but my counsel told my parent. Then my parent got involved. Yeah. yeah. You know. So I was kind of mad. Like now you see. I could never tell this uh, counselor yeah. anything anymore. But guess what? I am who I am because I got a chance yeah. to talk to my parent about this. You yeah. know? So honestly, like, sorry again to cut you off. No, but, you're good. You know, We're just kind of like wrapping it you up. You know, so just like, honestly, like, whoever you might talk to, he might not be the, he or she not be the person who's going to help you. Just be aware, like, you know, don't feel bad that why they told this person. Maybe God doesn't, he's not ready to use that person. Maybe that person doesn't have a, right words or right things to say but the person that he told him i have maybe somebody else went through the same thing yeah. mm -hmm. you know so just be aware of that that's yeah. what i just want to add and always remember to not blame yourself mm -hmm. i think that's the worst thing yeah you blame yourself and then you stress yourself out and then it makes you feel like something's wrong with you even more than it really is yeah. and the person you tell you don't know if they've gone through the same thing and overcome it because somebody else has helped them so you also do have to give the person the benefit of the doubt mm -hmm. that if you tell them they're not gonna go just tell somebody else or judge you you just have to be able to be like okay it this person didn't work out now i know and yeah. now you know what i yeah. mean just don't, share that. don't be too hard on yourself mm -hmm. like sure. it no you're not the only one going through it yeah. you know what i mean i think we get stuck in the mindset as like you would never understand you've never gone through something yeah maybe they've never gone through suicidal thoughts yeah. but they've mm -hmm. gone through a trauma in their family where somebody got sick and they dealt with that and it hurt them or like 
they've experienced something else, yeah. it's not always, that's not the only thing. They can always talk to you about what they gone through and you guys start sharing and then that's how, you know, you become, like, create a bond. Or well, maybe you're going through that so God could use you. Yes. Sure. So, yeah. you know. Yeah. Well, hey, man, that wraps up uh, the Suicidal Thoughts episode, man. And before I leave, you guys already know it. Uh, God loves you. Mm-hmm. I love you. God bless and stay safe. Thank y'all. Love you. Thank y'all for getting through the entire video of Suicidal Thoughts. Uh, Suicide is an extremely tough topic to talk about, and a lot of us aren't comfortable enough to talk, and that's the biggest issue. We, I think the biggest thing to prevent suicide is to be able to be open and talk about it. And I know a lot of us have friends that are, aren't capable of being able to discuss with the, that topic specifically. But you know what? There's this thing called a suicidal hotline, and their number is 1-800-273-8255. This hotline is only there to help you. No one's there to judge you. No one's there to make you feel worse than you already feel. Their job is specific. They're trained specifically for this situation, to just be there to listen. They don't even, they, some might not even have to say anything. They just want to be there for you in a time of need. And if you really are going through that, or if you're someone that knows someone else is going through it, I would really recommend you to call that hotline. Because honestly, that can honestly be the difference between saving their life and not saving their life. Suicide is something that I think we need to be more open about, something that we need to be serious about and not, not take it as a joke. And these trained professionals on the hotline, they know what they're doing, and I highly suggest you guys to call them. Again, thank you all for checking out the video. But please, please, if you know someone there, or, or are that person going through it, please call that number. Again, it is 1-800-273-8255. Thank y'all. Love y'all. Have a blessed day or night.